So here's my old gaming setup with a 2020-48 inch Sony A9S 4K TV. This was right before I decided to replace it with the LG C2 EVO 4K TV. The problem isn't the image quality since they both use LG Display's OLED panels and that means insanely good colors and super sharp image quality. My issue with the A9S was that it was lacking greatly in the gaming department. It was missing important features that could improve gameplay experience so I picked up the LG C2 which is LG's 2022 installment into their C line of OLED gaming TVs. The bottom line is that the Sony A9S is an OLED TV that feels like it was made with features geared towards watching movies and shows, but the LG C2 is sold as a gaming TV with the latest in gaming technology. Also, I'd like you guys to comment down below if you'd rather game on an OLED versus any other kind of display. Once I got through the basic TV setup, I was greeted with the nice and bright LG EVO OLED screen. To get the best image quality out of the TV, make sure to take off the thin film that's on the screen as well. After mounting and setting up the TV, I also reorganized the entire gaming setup, connected my PC and PS5 to the TV through HDMI 2.1, and did as much cable management as I could to keep things clean. I'm not going into detail on what makes up the setup in this video, but I'll probably end up doing a tour video of the space pretty soon here. So now's a good time to go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Now let's go over my first impressions of the LG C2 and also how it's an upgrade from my Sony A9S, which I had there before. First thing you'll probably notice besides the TV screen is the super thin bezels around the screen, which is now common with majority of TVs nowadays. It helps make the TV content stand out better and gives the C2 a clean and modern look. Personally, I love the ability to watch TV and game from wide angles, especially with how my setup is positioned within the room. The C2 has some incredible wide viewing angles as you would expect from OLEDs. This part is nothing new since it was possible with the Sony A9S as well. You can pretty much watch from virtually any angle and the TV content will look great. As you probably saw during the installation, the top side of the TV is extremely thin and should definitely be handled with care. The bottom side is a lot thicker and houses all the connectivity ports like the four HDMI 2.1 ports for connecting multiple compatible devices. That brings me to the next thing, how good OLED displays are for gaming. If you've never used an OLED TV for gaming before, you're going to be truly amazed if you decide to start with the C2. OLED TVs have the best response times and input lags of all the different kinds of TVs out there. One thing I noticed immediately using the LG C2 is how much brighter the OLED panel is versus the Sony A9S, which I had there before. The LG C2 uses LG's EVO panel, which is a brighter version of their OLED panel. The C2, like other OLEDs, also produces very accurate and vivid colors, and this can look especially great when gaming. Image sharpness is incredible as well, and the C2 was designed with tons of features to improve any gaming experience. Think of it as a TV, but with tons of features you'd expect to see in a gaming monitor. One thing to note is that OLED TVs are notorious for glares and struggle in bright rooms. My gaming setup is inside a closet that's facing a large window in the room, so when there's light coming in through that window, it's usually a little annoying to watch anything on the A9S OLED. But the C2 is brighter and easier to see even with the window open. I decided to try it out with the PS5 first. I had it hooked up to the second HDMI 2.1 input and it ran me through the usual PS5 new display HDR setup. Checking out the video output info and settings on the PS5, you'll notice that everything to maximize the console's gaming experience was pretty much turned on. This means that the TV is compatible with console features like variable refresh rate, HDR, high resolution, and high frame rate gaming up to 120 uh, frames per second. In short, it's perfectly compatible with the PS5. There's also a game optimizer menu which comes on when you press the settings button on the remote control. From here you can see and tweak settings like FPS, VRR, black stabilizer, low latency, picture mode, and tons more. You can set up game enhancing audio and visuals from this menu and also turn on NVIDIA's G-Sync or AMD's FreeSync Premium. I tried PS5 exclusive Horizon Forbidden West, which has one of the best image quality I've ever seen in a game up to date. The game looked incredible on the screen and played just as smoothly. Colors produced looked extremely accurate 
and the gaming experience was splendid. At this point, I wasn't pushing the TV past what I was able to do with the Sony A9S, which only had HDMI 2.0 ports and a maximum refresh rate of 60 Hz. For reference, the C2 has a maximum refresh rate of 120 Hz through its four HDMI 2.1 ports. Although the Series X isn't a part of my setup in here, I really wanted to see how it handled when paired with the C2, so I brought it in. I hooked it up to the third HDMI 2.1 input alongside the PS5. So this is great if you plan on using both of these consoles at the same time with the same TV. On the Series X, I jumped straight into the TV and display options menu to see what kind of options the TV had unlocked. Turns out gaming can be done at all kinds of resolution up to the maximum 4K and also at high frame rates up to 120 frames per second. Checking out the 4K TV details, what you'll notice is that the TV checks every box for the best gaming experience on the Series X, which the Sony A9S absolutely did not. For one, the Sony A9S won't let you game at anything higher than 60 frames per second. It also confirms here that the TV supports Dolby Vision and HDR10 standards for HDR gaming and movies, but I don't believe it supports HDR10+. So I decided to try out Halo Infinite, which is a first-person shooter. Halo allows for gaming at 120 frames per second, so this was the perfect game to test out how well the TV handles at high frame rates, you know, gameplay. You'll often see high frame rates being used in first person shooter games, and that's because gameplay gets smoother the higher the frame rates you play at. This makes it easier to make split second decisions, especially if you play competitively. Just like with the PS5, if you press the settings button on the remote, you get the game optimizer overlay with your current FPS and other settings that can be tweaked. The C2 has been programmed to output that overlay when either console is connected and output the usual vertical menu when using the TV in other modes. Switching on AMD FreeSync Premium on the Game Optimizer menu immediately connects the AMD graphics card being used in the Xbox or PS5 for variable refresh rates, which leads to smoother gameplay in essence. The gaming PC was the last thing to test. With the Sony A9S, I used an HDMI 2.1 splitter to connect multiple devices to a single HDMI port on the TV, and this worked great with no problems. I tried doing the same with the C2, but whenever I tried using HDR on PC, I kept getting some serious glitches on the TV, and so I opted for a direct connection. At this point, I was already using two HDMI 2.1 ports for the consoles and still had two left, so I hooked up the PC to the first HDMI 2.1 input. Now the issue with the HDR not working was gone. Something that I noticed immediately was that pushing the settings button on the remote acted differently than when connected to the consoles. It brought up the usual vertical menu which can be navigated through to find different settings including the game optimizer menu. I got my real first look into the general settings menu which had tons of options for customizing and improving audio and visual experience. I've always loved LG's Magic Remote for its mouse-like functionality. In comparison to the A9S, I absolutely prefer the Magic Remote. Just like other LG TVs, the remote comes in black and has pre-programmed buttons for common streaming networks like Netflix. The little ball at the center is my favorite part of the remote. It activates the remote's mouse-like feature which makes navigating across the TV so much easier and faster. So my PC uses an NVIDIA 3080 Ti graphics card, so I had to check to see if it would pair well with the C2's g sync compatibility. And it did, so I had that enabled immediately. Different scaling options look great on the TV as well, and the image quality remains sharp throughout. For my PC game test, I decided to go with Assassin's Creed Origins. Right in the settings menu, you'll notice that I'm able to play at 4K and up to 120 frames per second, although I chose to go with 100 frames per second. I've also got VSync and HDR turned on for the best in image quality and the smoothest gameplay experience. I also game at all of the highest settings since my PC was built just to do that. I had to turn on Game Optimizer in the settings menu to use it while gaming on PC. You'll notice that the FPS count is changing very slightly on the screen since I've set it to 100 FPS maximum. You'll also notice that Nvidia's G-Sync is active now as opposed to AMD's FreeSync when I was using the consoles. Other settings can also be tweaked here in Game Optimizer to boost gameplay. Assassin's Creed Origins looked incredible, the cutscenes and color of the scenery was very rich and vibrant, and playing at a high frame rate while maintaining a high resolution of 4K is a great way to finally use some of my PC's potential. The Sony A9S always maxed out at 60 frames per second with my PC, so that was definitely not maximizing anything. Audio can be tweaked manually or enhanced using LG's AI through the settings menu. For me, I find that the sound works well enough, and to be honest, it sounds better than I would have, you know, expected. Are you sure you got the right dark herbalist? Huh. I happen to use my headphones a lot while gaming, but during the times when I'm not, I'm happy to have this option available to me. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the C2 so far. 
it's met and surpassed a lot of my expectations. The only issue which I have happens to be coming with OLED TVs and that's the price. The pricing of OLED TVs has always been wild, so the C2 is no different at all and I'm not surprised. The 48 inch model cost me 2100 Canadian dollars and that's after taxes. 1499 US dollars before taxes. My honest opinion would be to take a look at the LG C1 which is the predecessor to the C2 if you find that the C2 is too pricey for you. It's already discounted due to the release of the C2 and will get even cheaper during sales like Black Friday and Amazon Prime Day which is coming up pretty soon. The differences between the C2 and C1 isn't a lot, it's pretty much just incremental. Both TVs will certainly give you a solid gaming experience but you'll get it with the C1 at a better price. The Sony A9S on the other hand isn't cheap either and seems to be geared more towards movie and TV show enthusiasts. If you're looking for a TV geared towards gamers, you should definitely check out the C1 or C2. Anyway, I'm pretty much set up now and I love the new TV. I plan on doing a review on it after a week or two of really experiencing it. If you enjoy the video, drop a like below. Hit the subscribe button as well if you're new to the channel for more content like this one. Until the next video, it's Tommy with Midas Tech and I'm out y'all.